Hello. Tis the season. Midge season, that is. Here in the east, fall and winter can change the way we fish for trout with flies. Creeks and rivers run low and clear. Outflows from dams and spring creeks are often the only fishable water. Under these conditions, trout become weary, lethargic, and very picky, making small flies a good choice. That's not to say that small flies aren't code crackers other times of year. The zebra midge and its variants are year-round fish fullers. There are dozens of good videos out there showing you how to put a bead and wire and hook together on small hooks, and lacking any tricks or improvements, I'm resisting the urge to tie one of those now. So in this video, we're going to make a small, nondescript, kind of surface film floating midge pattern that has been very productive for me. So we have a size 20 Daiichi hook in the vise, size 20. That's a short shanked hook, so I can use, I think I can get away with size 20, or have been, and um, still tie a small fly, but get a good bite on the fish's lip when they do take this thing. So we got our thread started, and we work back to the point, the hook point, and add it in that sulky, it's a pearl um, tinsel. And it gives you, over a black thread, it'll give you kind of a, a green, um, shiny appearance, which seems to be uh, kind of a hot spot for these little flies. So this is where it comes in handy to have a material clip and get that curly, sulky stuff out of the way. I'm going to put on a whip finish here and um, use the bobbin cradle. So I want to wrap that sulky. You could start at the front and go back, maybe add two layers, but in, usually I just add a little super glue and kind of wrap forward using budding turns. Um, if it overlaps, if you miss a little piece, um, none of that seems to matter. The fish sure don't care. So the rotary vise kind of makes this a lot easier that curly plastic tinsel is um, a pain to work with if it slips out of your fingers. So we'll wrap most of the way forward and get everything out of the way. Everything but the camera. Kind of have to sneak in between here. And get a wrap around the sulky to tie it off. So here I'll snip off the excess. And these little flies, I mean, this uses very few materials. This is the shinio we singed at the beginning. Kind of made it into a, um, a point at the back end. And it'll keep it from fraying or unwrapping. We'll get a couple of wraps on this to hold it down. And I have it um, a little longer than the bend of the hook. And come in and snip off the excess. So essentially, there's only one more material to put on this fly. I like to go in front of that snipped off butt, so I'm tying this directly to the hook at first. So here, we'll get a wrap or two right in front there. And then we'll kind of climb up back on top of the end of the chenille. So butting turns and wrapping up over. and um, It gets a little frustrating if you try and wrap from the top down. Things will slip and get loose. So... Work my way back up, make a little bulb there, and I'll jump in front and whip finish. And that's about all there is to to this fly. So four or five turn whip finish in front of the uh, under that little wing that's sticking forward, and that's about half a strand of that poly yarn that I showed at the beginning. So I broke my thread, but it kind of broke off on my a frayed spot on my finger or a rough spot on my finger. So I snipped off the excess. Everything's good there. Cut off the um, poly a little beyond the hook point. That could look like a broken wing. It could look like any number of things that um, some misshapen fly looks like in its, uh, as it's struggling in the surface. And then I'll just trim that so it, the, the back wing so it doesn't look so chopped off square and drop a head cement and
I was up on Oil Creek uh, not long ago in November, and I went through my entire midge box, dry fly box, and I couldn't, fish were rising, but I couldn't get one until I switched to this fly. And um, not sure why or what did it. I think olives were coming off, and uh, this was the secret. So thanks for hanging with me to the end here, and if you want to learn more about me, um, go to Amazon.com and look me up there.